Yo, 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 yo. So another installment of Velvet Owl watches movies so you don't have to. Where Velvet Owl watches movies so you don't have to. Pretty simple concept, isn't it? Yet no one listens. I just scream into the void as these movies crush my soul. But this week, we're doing a movie that I've actually been wanting to watch for like 30 years. Even maybe longer. Hamburger the Motion Picture. I have absolutely no idea what the fuck this movie is about. I've never actually even Googled it any further than today. (laughs) But I just, because I don't want to know what it is about. All I know and all I remember is that in the Leonard Maltin movie guide, the description for it was just, whoever watches a movie with this title gets what they deserve. Fuck yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if I deserve it. I deserve whatever's going to happen because I am watching fucking Hamburger, the motion picture. So never in my life have I, you know, Googled to find out further what this actually is about. And the only place I've been, a- I've found it, which I've only checked. Uh, today's the first day I've actually even like searched for it because it just popped into my head. So I said I've been wanting to watch this for like 30 years. Kind of on and off, and I think I've forgotten about this film for like 20 years. <laughs> it just popped into my head, though, of that fucking great review in Leonard Maltin's movie review book. Um, so yeah, I was like, you know what, I should fucking watch this, because if it's that bad that I'm going to get what I deserve for watching it, it belongs on this podcast. And there's no dis- the only place I found it was YouTube... There's no description given with it, and the um, thumbnail is just the logo, Hamburger, the motion picture. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm in for, (laughs) and thankfully you can listen to this before you yourself dive into this. So, um, I guess whoever watches the movie gets what they deserve, and whoever listens to this podcast gets what they deserve. Which I guess is slightly less than what I deserve. Okay, and I can tell right away this is going to be a raunchy 80s sex comedy. It just has that vibe. And um, hopefully it's one of the nicer ones that has aged okay. Hopefully it doesn't have like uh, sexual assault like Revenge of the Nerds does. Or sexual assault like Porky's does. Or, you know, so... I'm hoping it's more like The Last American Virgin. That that one uh, holds up well. No sexual assault in that one. But just... We've got a montage of people eating burgers at different restaurants. And it's set to this tune that I'm guessing is called Hamburgers for America. Because that's the refrain over and over. Hamburgers for America. Hamburgers for America. Which... Is like the fucking greatest terrible song I've heard for like an 80s movie theme. It's like Brian Adams wrote a jingle for McDonald's and we got this crap. It's perfect. I love this. I, you know what? Fuck you, Leonard Maltin. Because so far, I, if this is what I deserve, I deserve the best, I guess. Um, But the movie stars Dick Buttkiss. Or at the very least, he's got top billing. And I get the sense that he probably only got ca- cast because his name is Dick Buttkiss. Which, I don't know why he isn't, like, cast in more, like, terrible, raunchy comedies. Because he's fucking Dick Buttkiss. Greatest name ever. Do the kids these days know Dick Buttkiss? We start off at the women's college, because of course we do. Actually, I don't know if it's strictly a women's college. I think it's a co-ed college, but we're just at the women's dorm. And we're in the showers. Not much nudity, at least that I can tell. Because this is YouTube, and so it's kind of like a very blurry, like, upload. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing that Hamburger, the motion picture, has not gotten 
a remastered Blu-ray, Blu-ray release, which, come on, people, people, get on that. I, I am demanding a remastered Hamburger the Motion Picture. Can we get that? So all the women, they're taking a shower, but in one of the shower stalls, one woman is making out with her boyfriend. Oh yeah, they're gonna get it on. But cock blocked by the fat chick because this is the 80s and the fat chicks just are no fun. Which, you know, Hollywood, just get your game together. Fat chicks are the most fun. They're jolly. I say this as a fat man. Fat people are jolly. Stop making us the butt of your jokes. We can be the sexy leads too. Kevin James bangs Leo Remini and King of Queens. I don't get it. But, so the fat chick, she screams like, Because, I mean, I don't think she minds so much that, you know, Stud Muffin there is going to get it on. And she'd probably be okay with, even if she got to see his floppy wang just flopping about. I mean, I don't know if he's floppy. He'd probably be hard right now because he is making out with the girl. But I do have my questions of how he got into the shower in the first place without anyone noticing. Where the other girls were like, "Uh, yeah, whatever. I got to get to class, so let me just wash up real quick. Just, I don't know. How did he sneak in? But apparently he's uh, being sent to... The psychologist or something. And must have been sent right away because he's got no shirt on. So I think he's in the process of getting dressed while he's heading over there. So the psychiatrist or doctor, whoever he got sent to, you know, she's wondering, you know, does he really want to be in college? Because he's constantly being kicked out of class and even hospitalized one time with his thing in a sling. Actual quote. I can only imagine how that worked out, but, you know, Stud Muffin says, you know, it's not his fault. He would like to get an education and make something of himself, but every time he's around a woman, they just want to jump his bones. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, of course, you know, Stud Muffin will think that because, you know, he's a good-looking guy, so he thinks that, you know, automatically... Every girl just wants to bang him, and he doesn't know the word no, and so he's a statutory rapist. But no, it actually is true, because the psychiatrist doesn't waste much time in taking off her shirt and trying to jump his bones. Like, I don't know. Um, I think I saw a video like that on Pornhub. Um, actually, like, 50 videos like that on Pornhub within the first page of search results. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe this was, like, a porn script, and they couldn't get anyone to, like, make it into a porn, so they're like, oh, maybe we make a few little tweaks. We'll sell it as a raunchy 80s comedy. Which I have no complaints about so far. But seriously, like, this plot, like, so far, just really feels like the plot from, like, an 80s porn movie. And now that I think about it, I don't know if there's really all that much distinction between the plots of 80s raunchy sex comedies and 80s porn. Um, I think just kind of an 80s raunch comedy, everyone just gets cock-blocked. I think that's the only real difference. Because, again here, Stud Muffin gets cock-blocked by a professor who walks in. And then Stud Muffin's just all worried because the psychiatrist's father is going to kill him. So I don't know if the psychiatrist's father is like the dean of college or something. And we jump to the next scene, which I'm imagining is at least this lady's father. Or maybe he said that his father was going to kill him. Someone's father. And I'm assuming that this is that person's father because he's strangling someone and yelling, I'm going to kill him. So by context... By the Eisenstein method of editing, the Eisenstein theory. Am I even pronouncing his name right? 
Am I, like, completely way off? You know, the Russian guy who had the whole theory about, like, how you edit stuff will manipulate the emotion of the audience. Anyways, yeah, I think this guy is the father that's going to kill Stud Muffin. Okay, it's Stud Muffin's father, because now... See, that's the problem, like, this transfer is, like, so blurry, it's hard to kind of tell at times, but it was... Um, Stud Muffin, who's getting choked out. So I'm guessing his father was saying, I'm going to kill you, not I'm going to kill him. Um, again, Hollywood, I need a Blu-ray remastered collector's edition box set for Hamburger, the motion picture. I got this pause, and apparently this was uploaded in 2017. So uh, did it take that long for someone to be like, Fuck, the world needs to see Hamburger the Motion Picture, and I'm going to do it. I am the man to put it on YouTube. And I'm imagining it will never get taken down with a copyright strike, because probably no one wants to claim copyright on, oh, yeah, this movie. But so, you know, Stud Muffin's parents are mad at him because he fucked the school shrink. Um, they didn't really fuck her, though. Was about to. Was about to fuck her, so I guess that's as that's good enough. That's as bad. So they're mad because you know it's gonna mean he's gonna get kicked out of college again. And mom says, you know, that college bent over backwards for you. And dad says, this co-ed's bent over backwards for you. And hi yuck 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 yuck. Um, I think the dad is Dick Butt Kiss. Um, I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe because. Dick Buckus wasn't he like a football player? And he was big in like the 70s, I think. So I'm imagining the dad would be more um, age appropriate to be Dick Buttkiss. Although, how awesome would it be if Dick Buttkiss was the stud muffin? That's just whole level of just brilliance. And as far as I can tell, the reason his parents are mad at him um, is apparently he won't get his grandfather's inheritance unless he gets a university degree. I don't know why the parents are upset about that. Um, shouldn't they be like, eh, fuck you, you're shit out of luck, you're not getting the money. Or is it that the parents can't touch the money, so the money, where does the money go? You know, does just no one get the money? I guess, like, maybe the parents are like, yeah, we've spent so much money on you that you get that inheritance, it's coming to us. I don't know. Why are they so mad? Even the mom's going to try to choke him out. Why are they so mad at Stud Muffin? It's his life, as Bon Jovi would say. And as James Vanderbeek would say, I don't want your life. I'm a stud muffin without grandfather's inheritance. Then as luck would have it, a commercial just happens to come on at that exact moment for a new university, Bovine University. Okay, it's not called Bovine University, uh, if you catch that Simpsons reference. Simpsons did it! But it's a college I, involving steakhouses or something. To learn about burgers or something. I don't know. The guy's very Texas. Because, you know, Texas is all about steers and queers. So, yeah, I didn't quite get from the commercial what exactly kind of degrees this university is going to offer. But I think Stud Muffin's going to jump at it because he's a stud. And really, I think no other college will give him a chance at this point. So Stud Muffin goes to the local Buster Burger fast food joint to go apply for Buster Burger University. No, I think he just went there for food. He just ended up ap applying for the university while he was there, probably because he remembered the commercial. Um, while this is going on, there's an old lady in the drive-thru, and she's trying to order, but apparently you have to order things in a specific way. And she got really pissed off and starts yelling at the drive-thru guy, and they start yelling back and forth, and she has a heart attack and dies. And no one's really all too concerned. Which always reminds me, like, one of these days, I probably won't do it, but if I had, like, a prank show or something, I would want to, like, go to a drive-thru and just sit there and say nothing and see, like, 
how long it goes on before someone does something, comes out to check on me. That'd be kind of cute. cool. If you have a prank show, do that. But so, um, Stud Muffin, he's trying to order some food. Unfortunately, it's a woman behind the counter, and because Stud Muffin is just pure pheromones, she wants to bang him instead of, you know, taking his order. But luckily, the guy manager is there, and he tells him about how great uh, Buster Burger University is. Tuition paid, everything's paid, there's Buster Burger insurance and a Buster Burger loan if you want to start your own franchise. It is fantastic, so Stud Muffin is signing up. And I'm telling you, I think I love the soundtrack to this film. So we get another, like, just pure 80s type of jingle. Just, Buster Burger feels so good. Something, something, eat more burgers. Um, Just one of those, like, big jingles where it's, like, the chorus of, like, people singing, like, the old, like, McDonald's commercials and stuff like that. Like, Coke and all that. You know, like, in the 80s, they all had, like, that song where it's, like, just a group of people just very happily, cheeringly singing. And that's what we're getting here. It's fantastic. I love it. And even though I'd already forgotten the words, Buster Burger, <laughs> it'll be in my head for, like, five seconds. So we get a look around of Buster Burger University, and all, like, I guess... I don't know if it's students or staff or whatever, but they're all kind of like goose-stepping in fast food uniforms. And there's some people dressed up like ketchup and mustard and relish. So, it seems like it's going to be a fun university. You know, I'm, I'm now already regretting having gone to like a real university and not going to Buster Burger University. And so we get a look at uh, the new class which is a very wide variety of people, you know. In addition to Stud Muffin, you got Sleazy Stud Muffin. Um, kind of like a Leisure Suit Larry type guy, except his Leisure Suit's kind of plaid. And there's a super nerd, because what is college with a uh, wacky nerd, you know? And then there's a nun, like seriously, like a nun. She's decided to enroll into Buster Burger University. Good for her. I mean, I thought nuns had, like, their own kind of, like, education system, like, their own universities, but um, I guess maybe extracurriculars aren't so good at the nun university. And you don't really learn about the propers in and out of burgers. And then there's a militia chick, like, seriously, like, guerrilla-type warfare-type, like, woman from third world country that's about to overthrow, like, the dictator. Or maybe she's on the side of the Dictator, who's there apparently to try to get some food for her family back home. Makes sense. She's, she's, uh, she's trying to live the American dream, I guess. And then we've got a sort of Rick James wannabe. Um, a little closer to the Rick James wannabe in Friday the 13th part, what was it, 5 or 7 or 23? Um, just not as much Jerry Curl, though. But the police brought him in, so it's part of, I guess, his parole or something, his sentencing. Um, I don't know. If it's kind of a Rick James wannabe, I'm guessing it was drugs that he was caught on. And meanwhile, I think this is Dick Buckkiss. He's sort of a drill sergeant type character. Except he kind of comes off more like Sergeant Slaughter than a real drill sergeant. So, I'm not sure if it's Dick Buckkiss for sure. So, I'm going to call him Discount Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Buttkiss. Yeah, we'll go with that. Because he's probably Dick Buttkiss. He's doing Sergeant Slaughter impersonation. Sergeant Buttkiss. Apparently, Rick James is pretty much going to is guaranteed to graduate because he's black and Buster Burger University has not ever had a black person graduate and so they kind of want to show the world like hey they're not racist so hey look there's going to be a black guy that graduates um Sergeant Buttkiss he's uh, not happy that there's a really fat guy in the class as well because uh, he thinks that Fatso is just going to eat all the food but Fatso has his own plan 
see, whenever he gets the urge to start eating, he electrocutes himself. And that takes away the urge. Um, that's kind of a extreme method. But if it works, I think he's got a new diet system here. You know, you feel like eating? Electrocute yourself. Sort of how, like, remember in a uh, cat, Cat's Eye? That scene where James Wood decides he wants to, like, quit smoking. And so they, like, electrocute him every time he wants to smoke. And then after he leaves, if he decides he's going to smoke, there's a whole, like, group that's ready to kill him. See, now that's effective. So I think if we do the same thing with fat people, this is how we're going to... This is how our country will get healthy once again. Every time you feel like eating, electrocute yourself. Oh, and there's also some rules for the university, uh, most of which are basically no drugs and no sex. So, you know, no having a good time. You know that these guys, they're going to find a way to have a good time. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God, I... See, now that's terrible, because, you know, it's Bill Cosby. We can't make Bill Cosby jokes. And my mind completely blanked on the theme song to Fat Albert. Anyhow, so it's completely worthless. I should go back and erase it, but I'm lazy. So we're going to sit with my failed joke, because how is that different from any other joke I make? The owner of Buster Burger, Mr. Buster, I guess, or maybe he's Mr. Burger, wouldn't that be crazy? His first name is Buster, and his last name is Burger. He was just born to start a hamburger franchise. So, he uh, swings by on his golf cart with his, like, super hot wife, who's, like, half his age, like a third of his age, and has big bazongas, because she is hot, and the guys are gonna bang her. At least one of these college kids is going to try to bang Mr. Buster's wife. Uh, probably Leisure Suit Larry, but I have some hope for Fatso. I think he could do it. So, Leisure Suit Larry and Stud Muffin are roommates, and they go to their room, which has, like, their beds are giant hamburgers. Not like real hamburgers, they're just designed to look like hamburgers. And yeah, I guess the school uniform is the weird, like, fast food worker outfit, which, you know, and I'm 80s fast food worker outfit, which is just horrendous. They've kind of scaled back in recent years and made it look more presentable if you're going to, like, McDonald's or something, but back in the 80s, those things were, like, horrendous. And Stud Muffin is psyched about it because it means that he probably won't get laid and he can focus on his studies, which is, uh... Admirable, admirable that he wants to focus on his studies and learn whatever exactly it is supposed to learn at Buster Burger University. Leisure Suit Larry, however, has all sorts of snack food and drinks and porn hidden underneath his suit. Like, seriously? Um, it's like contraband. Which, yeah, because, I mean, even though it's a fast, fast food university... They're all about healthy food, so they've been, like, confiscating the snacks. So luckily, Leisure Suit Larry has Twinkies underneath his shirt. So Mr. Buster is holding a party over at his house to introduce all the new students. Or maybe it's on campus, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where how far his house is from the campus. But they're having a party, and Trophy Wife's there, and... Leisure Suit Larry, he's just smooth with the moves. Um, he just asks her to dance, and yeah, he's pretty much going to get into her pants later. Which is all the smoothest you need in these films. But you want to dance? I mean, it helps that I think she absolutely hates her husband and doesn't want to be there, so she wants to go with the young stud, even if the young stud's a Leisure Suit Larry. The real stud, Stud Muffin. Uh, he's running away from the crazy militia chick because she wants to bang him, of course. So he runs off and goes dances with Sergeant Buttkiss, his wife, which makes Sergeant Buttkiss very angry. And that's going to start the rivalry. He's going to be extra hard on Stud Muffin. 
Meanwhile, Fetzo sees the open buffet and he's like, I want to eat! I want to eat! So he goes to his foolproof measure of electrocuting himself over and over and over. And he just goes crazy and high, haywire and just runs around and accidentally knocks Sergeant Buttkiss into the pool and he falls in the pool. And then Super Nerd looks at it and goes, hey, it's a pool party. And so everyone jumps into the pool and apparently most of them can't actually swim. But Stud Muffin helps save the day and people get pulled out of the pool. We get a look at what kind of classes they teach over at Buster Burger University. And we learn things like burgers plus buns equal bucks. And while the burgers are 100% bull, they don't use 100% of the bull. And it's okay to say, we refuse to serve assholes. Which really is so much better than the education I got. I Can I do a do-over on college, please? Can I go to Buster Burger University? I could have been like a burger man or something. Sergeant Butkus is teaching the important class, the one where you learn how to actually put the burger together. And it is a lot more fucking complicated than I thought it would be. I mean, I feel bad that, you know, burger workers are making minimum wage if they have to deal with this bullshit. Because it's got like this crazy machine that's like a little conveyor belt that cooks the burger and it throws ketchup and stuff on top of the bun and you have to get it all together and put it together in a perfect sandwich and into the box, the styrofoam box, because this is the 80s and we didn't care about the environment back then. But there's just so much and... Of course, since Sergeant Buttkiss hates Stud Muffin for dancing with his girl, he makes Stud Muffin go out and try out the machine, and he just overloads it, and it's just too much for Stud Muffin to handle, and he's getting overwhelmed, and oh no, it looks like he may fail the class. Super Nerd runs into the burger scientist, who gives him a sneak peek of the upcoming Buster Burger candy bar, which is like a burger in a candy bar form. Mmm, yum. Ugh. I think I'll pass, but Super Nerd is so super in love with it, and Burger Scientist decides, hey, how about you be my partner? You be the taste tester. And Super Nerd's all like, yippee! And Burger Scientist is like, eh, okay, whatever. And Stud Muffin's at his room trying to study but Se Leisure Suit Larry comes in with a blow-up doll, promising a good time. But he decides... Um, Stud Muffin says no, because, of course, why is he going to waste time with a blow-up doll? Stud Muffin wants to get laid. He's going to get laid. He just has to poke his head out the door, or poke his cock out the door and go, Hello! And there's going to be tons of women jumping on it. But Leisure Suit Larry does convince him that, you know... They should at least get out and go on to town and just have some fun, because otherwise you're just going to go crazy from all this studying. And Leisure Suit Larry has a plan for how they can sneak off campus. Stud Muffin and Leisure Suit Larry manage to escape the campus by hiding out in one of the prison trucks that comes in and out every day. That it seems to kind of just drop off Rick James wannabe. And so they get into town, and they go to a Chinese restaurant. Because, you know, who wants to go out and escape from the fast food res restaurant camp... Blech, the fast food restaurant university and go eat at a fast food restaurant. So they go out for some Chinese. But, coincidence of coincidence, they run into Trophy Wife and Sergeant Buckkiss's girl there. Which, uh, she's, um, Bur Buster Burger's daughter, but she calls Trophy Wife mom, so I don't know if she's her daughter or stepdaughter, and she's forced to call her mom. But, you know, they invite Stud Muffin and Leisure Suit Larry to come over, mostly because Trophy Mom seems to be a thirsty bitch and wants to jump Leisure Suit Larry. But, unfortunately... There's a little cock blocking involved, because there always is cock blocking in 80s raunchy sex comedies. 
because Sergeant Buttkiss has shown up at the restaurant. So quickly, Stud Muffin and Leisure Suit Larry hide underneath the table. Will they be caught? Will they get out in time? Sergeant Buckus decides that since him and his girl have decided that at some point they were going to go eat Chinese food, that why not do it now? So he sits down to have Chinese food. Unfortunately, it turns out Trophy Wife does not wear underwear, which means Leisure Suit Larry is just going to go all up there and decides to eat her out. Just right there at the restaurant. She's eating Chinese. He's eating, you know, you just fill in your own tasteless joke there. But it's that me questioning this. Now, is this another example of sexual assault happening in a raunchy sex comedy being passed off for laughs? Because... He is going down on her without her permission. But, you know, she's been wanting him to go down on her, I assume. She's just wanted to hook up with him and bang him. And, you know, she's not saying no. And she knows who she is, so it's not like Revenge of the Nerds, where the nerd went down on Betty, and she was only okay with it at because she thought it was her boyfriend, so she hadn't been tricked into it. So, I mean, I assume it's consensual, but I don't know, like, because it just starts off like she's not expecting it. So it kind of is, like, is does that initial moment of him just going down on her, does that qualify as sexual assault or not? This is a tricky area. Um, so if anyone out there has done a paper on sexual assault um, disguised as comedy in 80s raunchy movies, be sure you include this one and tell me your results of what you think. I would hold a poll, but there's like one of you listening. So I'll hold the poll anyways. <laughs> Email me at velvetal at hotmail.com if you and tell me if you think this situation should be considered sexual assault or not. Because I'm confused. I'm if not except for that like initial moment of it just being out of nowhere. I, I don't know. I kind of lean towards it kind of is. This is this is gonna bother me, isn't it? But anyhow, due to this going on and Trophy Wife having, like, the biggest orgasm of her life, Sergeant Buttkiss finds out that, well, there's Leisure Suit Larry and Stud Muffin, and they've broken the three cardinal rules of Buster Burger University. A, no leaving campus, B, no eating outside food, and C, no sex. And since they've then done all three, they're not getting expelled because Trophy Wife, you know, she sticks up for them, I guess. I think that's what he said. But they're confined inside the pickle-shaped Iron Maiden coffin or something. I mean, I don't know if there's spikes on the inside of it, but it looks like an, the Iron Maiden type of thing, just a pickle instead of a woman. Well, there's no spikes inside of the pickles, but they get uh, poured torture sauce, according to the button on the side of the pickle, which I guess is just the secret sauce, just poured all over them, while the Buster Burger jingle plays over and over and over, which, I mean, I guess could be kind of torture, but I think it's kind of a catchy jingle. But I guess if, you know, probably around listening to the 400th time in a row, maybe at that point it becomes torture. Meanwhile, over at the lab, the burger scientist has been experimenting on the super nerd, injecting them with, according to him, 20 cc's of bird cum, which apparently is the equivalent of three tons of fried chicken. Don't know how the math works there, but he's the scientist, I'm not. And this is all to test out if they should start offering chicken products at Buster Burger. 
you know, I guess like chicken sandwiches and all that. Which, you know, I hear Chick-fil-A does the same thing. That is how they uh, design their Chick-fil-A sandwiches. They inject people with bird cum. That was the test. And they saw, okay, people like bird cum. We'll design a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Allegedly. Allegedly. Don't sue me, Chick-fil-A. If the one person listening to this podcast happens to be, like, a high-ranking person in Chick-fil-A, what would the odds of that be? Calculated, burger scientist. You're good with math. Now, they're at the on-campus church where Buster Burger is giving a sermon, because of course he is. That's, because Buster Burger, you know, it's more than an opportunity of a job, a career. It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. Um, he doesn't say that in so many words, but you kind of get the undercurrent. Meanwhile, um, Stud Muffin and Leisure Suit Larry are sitting right behind Trophy Wife and Sergeant Buckkiss's girl. And Sergeant Buckkiss is on the other side of the chapel, which, you know, it's his girl. Shouldn't he be, like, sitting next to her? But um, Trophy Wife discreetly sends a note to Leisure Suit Larry to meet her at the library later, because they're going to get it on. And, you know, that still doesn't make what Leisure Suit Larry did earlier not sexual assault. Because remember, in one of those soap operas, General Hospital or Days of Our Lives or whatever, there was a marriage and long-lasting romance built around a rape. What was it, Luke and Laura? That's That started with a rape and it became like the most like epic soap opera love story of all time. And started with a rape, just... So, there's precedence for sexual assault leading into long-lasting romances in pop culture. Uh, The crazy militia girl, who we need more of. I want to know more of her story. She's wearing a Chiquita banana-type fruit headdress, and Fatso is sitting behind her. And so, he sees the food, and he's getting hungry, and he starts picking off grapes. But he's like, no, this is bad, so he electrocutes himself again. And I think people have just grown used to it and decided, yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> no one, like, questions it or looks weird at it, like, what's going on? Like, eh, whatever. And Super Nerd, he's clucking like a chicken because he has so much bird cum flowing through his veins that he's just basically a chicken now. Now, Leisure Suit Larry is getting all dressed up because he's going to head over to the library to bang Trophy Wife because she wants it. So, I mean, she's inviting him, so I guess this time I can't fault him. You know, she's clearly now giving the okay go-ahead, so full-on consent, consent, so it's okay for him to bang her now. So he's off. Even though Stud Muffin's telling him, like, no, we gotta study for finals. And I admire Stud Muffin. He is really, like, dedicated to this. He is going to make sure he graduates. He's really committed to kind of learning. Even though, remember, it's just so he can get the inheritance money. But still, he's buckling down. Unfortunately, so there's a knock on the door, and it's not Leisure Suit Larry. It's the crazy militia girl, half naked, with an Uzi, demanding that Stud Muffin fuck her now. And no questions about this one. This is pure sexual assault, okay? And, you know, Stud Muffin's trying to tell her no, but she says if he doesn't do it, she's going to scream rape. Even though technically she's the one raping him. And, I mean, she's also got a fucking Uzi. She's not using that as the threat. (laughs) I mean, I guess that's the harder threat to pull off, because if he did say no, what's she going to do? Like, shoot him and get all this attention on him for shooting? But then, why bring the Uzi in the first place? Wait, 
Why does... So outside food is not allowed on the campus, but weapons are? Well, I mean, I think this is in Texas, so, you know, full Second Amendment rights. They can't tell her not to bring an Uzi onto campus, because that is her God-given right, even though she's an immigrant. So, and I'm not sure if she's legal or not. So does she have... Yeah, you'd think they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, this Second Amendment right is only for Americans. You're not American. But I was born here. We don't care. Where am I going with this? Yeah, I'm so confused now. Do I focus on her raping Stud Muffin or on why she has an Uzi? Like, I mean, okay, she wanted to bring an Uzi to campus to protect herself. But why did she bring it to sexually assault someone if she's not using that towards the sexual assault? Maybe she just didn't want to leave the un- the Uzi, like, unprotected. Like, just, you know, unsupervised. Maybe that's it. I'm also torn on the fact that, you know, she's got her tits out. She's wearing just panties, and she's got her machine gun, her Uzi, and it looks pretty hot, but she's also a rapist, you know, so, yeah, she's got tits out, but they are the tits of a rapist, so I can't go for that, but she's a kind of a ni- nice rapist, though, because she asks him what she wa- what he wants her to do. Normally, rapists, they just take full charge and do whatever they want. So even though he's she's trying to have sex against his will, she's offering him the choice of what she wants him to do. Or the other way. It's so hard when you're trying to... Because it's not often in these movies that it's the women co- committing sexual assault. But Stud Muffin, because he's smart and quick on his feet pretends he's gay and well since you know that means he's not a real man she just walks off with her fine sexy rapist self with just an Uzi and panties on and I'm sure she can find a real man like just roaming the halls with just that so, but that was a good plan. That was a good move, Stud Muffin. Um, so, yeah, I guess keep that trick in mind if you are ever in a situation where you're about to get raped by a militia girl, guerrilla girl from Nicaragua or wherever she's from. Pretend you're gay and hope that she doesn't shoot you with the Uzi. Leisure Suit Larry finds a trophy wife, and she decides she wants to fuck him inside of a helicopter. The helicopter that's on campus. Owned by Buster Burger, but since he never uses it, she figures it's a good hiding place. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that fucking inside of a helicopter is probably just a bad idea. Just doesn't seem comfortable. And while they're trying to get each other's clothes off, they accidentally turn on the helicopter. Seeing that the helicopter's on, Rick James Wannabe jumps in because he needs to get to his concert. Which, why are they booking him concerts when they know that, you know, he's uh, captured here in Buster Burger University? Like, is he not having contact with his managers? I mean, I guess there's no contact to the outside world, but his manager should at least be like, okay, well, he's not going to be able to perform. And so, while they're arguing, because Rick James Wannabe is there, and, you know, Trophy Wife doesn't want to show her tits to him, so she puts on a life preserver, and they accidentally get the helicopter up in the air, and it goes flying, and they're all scared, because are they going to be able to land without crashing? And they do land, unfortunately, taking out a car 
in the process, the lone car in this parking lot. The car owned by Sergeant Buttkiss. Oh, they're in for it now. Super Nerd gets taken into a gas chamber or something. Um, kind of hard to tell. It's very smoky and the definition on this YouTube transfer is not very good. So it's like just blurry to begin with. So I have no fucking idea what just happened. But he comes out and he laid an egg. Because of course he did. Um, well, I guess it makes sense because if he was pumped with chicken cum, then he gets pregnant. Because he's got chicken ovaries or something. I don't know. So many questions. It's time for oral exams, which take place in a darkly lit room with all the professors gathered around like they're the secret Illuminati sort of thing. And they, and the students are there one by one, and they ask questions. And as far as I can tell, I think everyone passed. At the very least, Stud Muffin did pass, because he's been studying, so good for him. He's no longer just Stud Muffin. In my book, he's Study Muffin. And this upsets um, Sergeant Buttkiss, because he did catch Stud Muffin making out with his girl. So he's going to look for some way that he can keep Stud the Muffin from failing. Or, no, he wouldn't keep Study Muffin from failing. He would make Study Muffin fail. He would keep him from passing. See, this is why I have so many mistakes in these podcasts. It's because watching these movies just turns my brain into mush. And our next, possibly last, test is to actually run a Buster Burger franchise. And things are going well. Little girl tries to steal some cookies, and they're like, Get your hands off the cookies, motherfucker! All of them, in unison. So, they've been trained well to call little girls motherfuckers. Because, you know what? Yeah, you're a cute little girl, cute little adorable little moppet, but you gotta pay for those fucking cookies. This ain't socialist Russia. But, Sergeant Buckus, he's got plans to sabotage them. See, he somehow has a way to, like, hack into the drive through um, box. So when this police pulls up and makes an order, he hacks through and starts insulting the police. And it's a black officer, so he's, like, you know, calling them Kunta Kinte and talking about checks at the unemployment office or the welfare office and just all sorts of and calling them pig and all that. So the cop is very angry. and He's going to come back later. He's probably going to shut them down. Oh, smooth move, dick butt kiss, because you're mad at Study Muffin. Meanwhile, there's, they're facing their own challenge when the Eating Club arrives, which is this group of, like, gigantic, like, overweight people. Ob- obese, morbidly obese people. They, they got to weigh, like, 500 pounds each. And, of course, since this is a very woke 80s comedy just every imaginable fat stereotype joke comes into play you know they order lots of food but diet coke and pig sounds while they're eating and they steal food from all the other paying customers man it's a mess and they're running out of food what are the poor buster burger trainees gonna do they find a case of extra strength laxatives and they make some milkshakes with it and yeah I know where this is going and I don't know if I actually want to watch this but there's gonna be a lot of shitting a lot of fat people shitting all over the place that's what's gonna happen I'm gonna close my eyes and hopefully it'll be over soon the laxative shakes are served and it ain't long before all these fat people have to just shit their brains out which Apparently there's only one toilet in this Buster Burger. So they all just, you know, they can't take turns. They can't wait. They just all pile in, which there's already a guy on the toilet. And we see from the outside, kaboom, an explosion. And I will commend the filmmakers for showing some taste and restraint and not actually showing any explosive diarrhea. Uh, We don't see any shit, no projectile bodily fluids. 
it's just your typical like explosion and everyone's got that smoky look on their face after being exploded <laughs> like a bomb went off so points were not showing shit cuz I, I really hate when films go like that extra mile of like we're just going to show you the projectile bodily fluids like no I don't need to be subtle and hamburger the motion picture you at least were subtle about it now Roddy biker gang shows up and they want burgers or one really they only order one burger I I don't know if just one person is having a burger or are they splitting it among all of them but it matters not because the fat people ate them completely out of food so there's no food left so the bikers are very upset so they start a riot they start destroying the place and the cops show up but not just any cops all black cops because they're all buddies of that cop that got insulted earlier he's mad so he got all the black cops to take out these racist honkies or whatever and so they decide to trash the place too and i will tell you it's actually kind of heartwarming to see the law and the outlaws working together it's I think this is the key to peace. You know, this is how we solve police brutality is that we allow the regular folks to commit brutality alongside with the police. And if we're all like focusing our brutality together and we realize that we are the same on the inside, we are all one. And so. But Sergeant Buttkiss is super happy about this because this plan is going according to, well, it's going accordingly to plan. Sergeant Buttkiss decides to play chicken with a group of chicken farmers, and the chicken farmers end up crashing their truck into the Buster Burger just because not enough damage has been done, and all the chickens are dead from the crash, and feathers flying all over the place, and the chicken farmers are just like, fuck this, we don't get paid enough or at all, and walk off. And everyone's just despondent and thinking, this is over. It's the end. And Super Nerd's about to shoot himself because he just can't take it anymore. But Study Muffin, he rallies the troops. He tells them, you know, we're gonna work hard, and we're gonna fix this, and there's all these dead chickens, we're just gonna make some chicken sandwiches, and we're gonna get back on our feet, And there's no wall, but it's a sidewalk cafe now. And everything's going to be great. And everyone's like, yeah, we're going to tear this motherfucker up. And we're going to put on the best Buster Burger ever. But unfortunately, before they can do that, arriving is the head honcho. um, Who I don't think his name actually is Buster Burger, even though I keep calling him Buster. Um, We'll just call him Mr. Burger. So... He arrives with Trophy Wife and his daughter and Sergeant Buckkiss in tow. And it looks like, oh no, this is over. Sergeant Buckkiss says they all deserve Fs for destroying this franchise. And it looks like Mr. Burger will agree until the nun, remember, there's a nun in the group, she takes a bite of the chicken and says, it's tasty by God. And Mr. Burger just has a vision. It's pure brilliance. It's a new slogan, a new logo for Buster Burger, having a nun saying, it's tasty by God, and the nun will be known as the Frying Nun, and Mr. Burger is just so enamored, he knows this is a brilliant million dollar idea, so he's decided he's going to give them all A's, and Sergeant Buckkiss is upset, because it's ruined his chances, but no, because since Sergeant Buckkiss was leading the students it was on him so he's going to be made an executive vice president and Sergeant Buckus is happy but not the students because you know they don't want to have to deal with him anymore luckily Fatso still has his electrocution thingamajig Sergeant Buckus is celebrating and he announces that he's engaged to Mr. Berger's daughter which is kind of news like because they've only been engaged to be engaged, but now it's a full-on engagement, and everyone's happy, but... Or at least Mr. Burger's happy at first. But then all our students, they get together, and they pass the 
electrocution thingamajig onto him and electrocute him and he starts shaking and he knocks a shake a milkshake over onto Mr. Burger and Mr. Burger's so upset that uh, Sergeant Buckus gets demoted to like janitor or something and he's very upset and everyone's cheering and celebrating and they all load up inside the limo because it's a glorious day graduation day Everyone gets their diplomas. Everyone's happy and so excited that we end with Rick James Wannabe performing a jingle, which sounds exactly like a jingle that Rick James would have written if someone, like if Burger King or something, had offered him an eight ball of Coke back in the 80s. He would have done it. He would have jumped on that like, yeah, I'll make you guys a jingle. So that was Hamburger the Motion Picture. And Mr. Leonard Moulton, I don't know if I can say that I deserved what I got or I got what I deserved. Um, I don't know. It's really not that bad as far as, like, 80s raunch comedy goes. Um, there was tits, which gets canceled out because they were tips of a rape tits of a rapist but you know there was the psychiatrist trips earlier you know and I'm always in favor of psychiatrists showing their tits so I guess that kind of cancels out psychiatrist tits and rapist tits but you know again good taste in not showing explosive diarrhea and what more can you ask from like a raunchy 80s comedy um yeah, not the worst of its kind. It's probably aged better than a lot of, like, 80s comedy. So, and it's made me want to eat hamburgers. But I will say, I like the soundtrack. The soundtrack is fun. I wish that was, like, actually available somewhere. Those are kind of, like, some fun, dumb songs about burgers. But, um, if you got any suggestions of what you want me to do, or... You got any, like, math problems you want me to solve, or you can explain to me the math problems that were in this film? Velvet Al at Hotmail.com, or leave a note if you're listening through some way that has notes. Um, I guess YouTube, really, because I don't know if any of the other podcast things have, like, comment sections, and if they do, I don't check them, but you can always comment on the YouTube page. So, till next time. Velvet Owl, out.